Hi everyone, hope you're well. Thanks for being with us today. Uh, I don't know when you're watching this, but thanks for being with us today. Um, this talk is something of a, a DVD extra, the bonus material, an extra preach for those who love the preach. Um, it's a talk that I recorded a few weeks ago for a church where one of my friends is the ministers and I've just wanted to put it out there for our church because it seems to correlate a fair bit with some of the stuff that we've been looking at in the opening weeks of Rise Up Church and Pray. Uh, maybe it kind of extends some of the ideas that we've been looking at in the opening weeks. So, Kath has very kindly recorded the Bible verses that I used, uh, the passage that I was talking from for that church, uh, and so that we can use it for our church. I've taken out some of the references to them at the beginning, to the people that I was speaking to, and we're just going straight into the passage. So I hope this blesses you, I hope it encourages you, and enjoy the DVD extra. Pray that God speaks to you through it. Thanks. This reading is from Matthew chapter 10, verses 5 to 16. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal those who are ill. Raise the dead. Cleanse those who have le leprosy. Drive out demons. Freely you have received. Freely give. Do not get any gold or silver or copper to take with you in your belts. No bag for the journey or extra shirt or sandals or a staff. For the worker is worth his keep. Whatever town or village you enter, search there for some worthy person and stay at their house until you leave. As you enter the home, give it your greeting. If the home is deserving, let your peace rest on it. If it is not, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you, or listen to your words. Leave that home, leave that home or town and shake the dust off your feet. Truly I tell you, it will become more bearable for Sodom and Gomorrah on that day of judgment than for that town. This reading is taken from Acts chapter 8 verses 1. To eight. On that day a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem, and all except, except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Godly men buried Stephen and mourned deeply for him. But Saul began to destroy the church. Going from house to house, he dragged off both men and women and put them in prison. Those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. Philip went down to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah there. When the crowds heard Philip and saw the signs he performed, they all paid close attention to what he said. For with shrieks, impure spirits came out of many, and many who were paralysed or lame were healed. So there was great joy in that city. I wanted us to look at uh, the two passages that we've heard today. I find them really interesting. The first of these we heard was Matthew 10. I think it's also the same event that's recorded in Luke 9. Jesus sending out the 12 apostles, the 12 disciples into the world, fully reliant on what he had taught them. But Jesus commissioning the disciples 
to go out with the good news, to go into the villages, to go in search of the lost sheep ahead of him. It feels like one of those moments where the parent is taking the stabilizers off the bike, that sort of, you know, letting them go for it. You've taught them how to ride. You've walked alongside them, holding the handlebars, encouraging them. And this is the moment where you let them go for it. You release them with what you know of me, with, uh, with all that I've taught you. Go, go with the authority that I've given you. Go ahead of me, go into the world with all that you know of me and reach the lost sheep. Jesus sends the disciples out scattered into the towns and villages to do a few things, to proclaim the message of who he is, to bring the kingdom of God in those places through healing, through deliverance, in Jesus' authority, not in their own strength, but in his strength. And to do this, reliant on God, really, reliant on God as their provider, as their sustainer, you know, he says to them, don't take all the stuff. Don't take all the stuff with you that will keep you comfortable. Don't take extra money. Don't take more clothes than you need. Don't take bags and sandals and stuff. Just go. Go in my name and see how you get on. The disciples are commissioned from gathered at the feet of Jesus to scattered to share and live the good news of Jesus. It's like you've been with me all this time, disciples. Now go. This is the next step in the journey. Go into the neighbourhood. Go into the neighbouring towns with this message. And Jesus says to the, to the disciples, I think acknowledging that it's going to be a scary thing. I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. There is an element to being a disciple, uh, being out of your comfort zone without all the extra stuff that will make you feel secure. That is a bit scary, isn't it? It is a bit scary. When the stabilizers come off and you just got a cycle, it is a bit scary. It is a bit scary going into the world commissioned with the good news of Jesus to share that with those that you meet. It can be a bit daunting. But the disciples are called to it. What's interesting in Luke's account is that after Luke 9, guess what? Luke 10, but, uh, you know, Jesus has sent out the 12 in Luke 9. And then after a few other events, various things, including the feeding of the 5,000, in Luke 10, the next chapter, Jesus sends out 72 of his followers. He had sent out the 12 then he sends out the 72 again into the world and the familiar words that we heard from Matthew 9 are, are almost repeated in Luke 10. I'm sending you out as lambs among wolves. They've been with Jesus and they're sent into the world in Jesus name. Again, no bags, no sandals, no comfort, it's reliant on God, reliant on his provision. Go. What I think is really interesting about this is that as we read on in the story of the Bible, after the resurrection and the ascension of Jesus, we see the church scattered and dispersed again in Acts 8. Obviously, they had been given the great commission, hadn't they, to go into the world, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. They'd been given that commission to go with the message of who Jesus is. But really, it's only as we get to Acts 8 that we see the believers going into the world. A, a persecution breaks out on those first believers and they had to flee for their own safety, for their own well-being. People are legging it to wherever they could get to, wherever they end up. And guess what? They're, you know, they're going there without their stuff, without supplies, without their comfort, they're running for their lives. Just as they'd been trained to, just as they'd practiced and rehearsed and they'd had a run through of it. You know, Jesus had said to them, go to these villages and don't take anything with you, but you're going in my authority, in my name, to proclaim the good news there. And in Acts 8, 
we see this happening. People who don't have time to prep, they're legging it for their lives, but they're going to new places in the in the name of Jesus to proclaim the message of Jesus in his authority. We come to lockdown version 2.0. Is it version 2? It might be 3. I don't know. I've lost track. But, you know, we've already done it. We've already been there. We've already come through lockdown once before. Maybe we're feeling a little bit more prepared than we were first time round. I don't know the detail of what church is going to look like or feel like for you, but there is an opportunity for us as the church to go into the world, to go into our communities with the message of Jesus, to share and proclaim the difference that he's made in our lives. Those first disciples went from gathered at the feet of Jesus to scattered in the name of Jesus. And for us, you know, we can't meet together like we'd want to, like we'd hope to. We can't gather in the name of Jesus physically, but we are scattered in the name of Jesus to share and proclaim the difference that he's made in our lives. We have the opportunity to share the hope that we carry in a season where many are, are despairing or feeling overwhelmed, we carry the hope of God into our places, into our streets, into our social media accounts, into the shops that we still go to because we still need to eat. It says in Isaiah 52 verse 7, How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace who proclaim salvation. Now, we are people who carry a message of good news despite what's going on, a message of hope in the middle of what's going on to communities and neighbours and friends that really, really need to hear it. There is an opportunity for us to be the church well at this time. For those first disciples, comfort was in, uh, you know, maybe bags or, or money or possessions. And Jesus said, you know, leave all that stuff. Forget all that. Leave that at home. Just go in my name. I think sometimes for us, for the church today, some of our comfort is that we spend lots of time maintaining programs and activities that keep the church busy. You know, I say this in love, I'm a church minister. Um, but with all that stuff off the table, now is the time for us to go into the world, dispersed, scattered with the message of Jesus, the hope of Jesus, to pray, to offer to pray for people, to bring the kingdom of God to the places that God's called us to. Why not? You know, we. Maybe in the past we'd be like, oh, I'm too busy. I'm too busy for outreach. I'm too busy to reach my neighbours. I'm, I'm involved in all this stuff that keeps the church going. And and now church looks different. And all the stuff that we used to do, it's not happening. So we have the opportunity to go into the world and to proclaim the good news and to live out the good news. Have a go. Have a go at offering to pray for people. It might feel a bit scary. You might feel like, sheep among wolves but have a go be a voice of hope to those in despair be a blessing on your street let people know that you're a christian and that, that you can pray for them the comfort and security of being too busy running activities for the church is gone leave it behind let's go into the world still as the church and share jesus i've been having a go at doing this myself during the first lockdown and, and in the past weeks, I've been going out jogging uh, a couple of times a week for my own benefit and my own enjoyment as much as anything else. But I've, I've been jogging on mission. I've been prayer jogging around our estate. And as I've been setting off, I've, you know, I've been wanting to share the good news of Jesus. I've been praying, God, give me an opportunity to share your goodness with someone and god give me the courage to take those opportunities if i see someone passing by give me give me the courage to step out you know 
I've got to be honest, there are occasions where I haven't. There are occasions where I've bottled that a little bit. But in the past six months, I've, I reckon I've prayed with more people who don't know the Lord than, than when church was normal. I'm not suggesting that everybody should start jogging. But my point is that even in lockdown, we can still interact with people. We still have neighbours. We still have the stuff that we do. And we can use these things as kingdom opportunities to share the good news of Jesus. Could we be the people who go and proclaim the message of Christ, the hope that we have? What is your story of hope? And could you share that? Could we be people who go and pray with boldness and courage? Who are the people that God's placed in your life? What are the needs of the people in your life? And what are the needs of the community that you're part of? How could you, with the love of God, respond to those things? And could we be people who are willing to lay down the comfort of busyness and activities and of just staying in to go to reach out uh, empowered by God's spirit to share God's love with a world that so desperately needs to know it at this time I saw this the other day online so I share it with permission I thought it's really helpful ways to be the church well during lockdown and I share these to encourage us to encourage us all to to live it out and to have a go. So the first was pray and read your Bible regularly. Second, ring a friend, ring people and see how they're doing. Third, offer to pray for people. Fourth, donate to your local food bank and donate to the services that are lifting people out of poverty at this time. Uh, what am I on then? Five, give a gift to a lonely neighbour. Next one, Thank and bless the people serving you, those who deliver the post and your parcels, key workers, shop workers. Thank them and be a blessing to them. Maybe you could write a card of encouragement to them. Next one, volunteer to serve in your locality. Next one, offer your gifts and skills as a blessing to the community locally. Next one, be a voice of hope and a positive presence online. There is so much negativity out there, isn't there? But we can be a voice of hope on our social media, our Facebook, our Twitter, our Instagram, whatever the kids are into these days. Next one, prayer walk your community and, and ask the Holy Spirit to move among the place and the people that you're called to. There are so many ways that we can still be the church well at this time. Let's not miss what God may want to do in us and through us at this time. My prayer for us as his people is that we would step out uh, with boldness and courage, that we would proclaim the good news of who Jesus is, that we would share the hope that we have uh, for what is for many a hopeless situation. We, we have hope, we have a living hope. And I pray that we would rely on the Holy Spirit going before us, in us, uh, alongside us as we go into these places and into the world with the good news of Jesus. I hope that encourages you this morning. I by no means have it all sewn up, but hey, let's have a go together and let's see what God does with what we use for his glory. Let's pray together. Loving God, thank you that you you called us by name. Thank you that you've pulled us from the pit and put our feet on a rock. And thank you for the privilege and joy of being your people. Lord, I pray that you'd fill us with courage and boldness to share this hope. I pray that you'd fill us with courage to reach those in our lives, our neighbours, our friends, uh, the people that we work with, our family members. God, let us be the people who bring good news the message of hope, the message of salvation, the message of new life and eternal life in Christ. Lord, I pray that you would do 
more than we could ask or imagine at this time, by your great power at work through us. Lord, work in us and through us in whatever way you want to. Come and have your way in your people at this time. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.